Hey guys, it's Hannah and this is Bookworms Talk and today I'm going to film a writing Q&A. These are some of my favorite videos to do and I'm trying to keep it more up with my writing series. If you don't know what I'm talking about, my whole writing series, I have a couple other videos within the series that you can go check out. I'll have it linked up here in a card and I'll laugh word on already. But let's just get started. First I'm going to start off on Facebook and Desiree asked, can you share with us one of your favorite characters that you've written? I thought about this, um, I thought about this pretty hard and I think I can share with you one, right? I can share one. I'm not gonna share too many details uh, just because I don't really know where he's gonna be completely at the end of the book because I've changed a lot of things and characters weren't what they were before. I'm gonna at least share with you his name. Um, his name is Roland. He is definitely the favorite character I've ever written. He comes to me so easily. Um, a lot of writers are able to actually hear the character within their own head and I've never I've never actually had that happen with me. I get the whole concept behind it where I can think through a scene in my head and play it off with the characters, but they've never been able to like come to me and say something, you know? Oh God, I'm realizing as I'm about to say this that it's gonna sound like such a trope, but I don't wanna give details. So I'm sorry if it's gonna sound a little bit like a trope. I promise you it's not, there's more to it. God, this feels so weird talking about it to someone who's like not Megan, basically. <laughs> Megan is my friend who has helped me with writing this and she's been there since before the characters had names. I think Jules was the only one that had a name at the time. So hey, he just got two names for the price of one just then. But Roland, he is, he's my favorite. I've struggled with writing Jules a lot. Um, the story centers around them both. Jules is. I would say she's more my protagonist than he is. It's a, it switches perspective, it's a dual perspective book. I think there's a title for this. Anyway, Roland and Jules both kind of have a troubled past, but focusing on Roland. Um, he came from a, a bad household. A lot of that has shaped the issues that he has now with, with trust and himself being a dependable person. He doesn't see himself as consistently um, able to be there for people even though throughout the story he does consistently show that he he is pretty dependable um, he has a lot of issues with that he's not able to see himself very clearly and I wanted a male role that had that issue without maybe realizing so much that he had that issue but I wanted it to be very real and there for the audience to see not that it's too often only done with female but it's not often done enough with the male characters so I wanted to kind of change it up he's not a quote-unquote good person. He's kind of, he would, he would be a villain in a lot of stories. Um, he'd be a villain in today's life. Something really like ironically happened to us. Something was stolen from us, from my family, and ironically enough it was kind of like what he specializes in stealing. And it was really interesting to see, because my family doesn't know what I write, um, to see what their reactions were and when they were talking about this mysterious person before we got the thing back but to hear what they were saying about the person, because of course you're angry because this person stole something from you. Someone who is a thief is this bad person because, because, because. Because um, I'm so used to seeing it from this other way, even though I know that obviously stealing, thievery, all bad things. But I'm so used to seeing it from this flip perspective. And I've talked about that in my last writing video, how I like to write from villain, villain's perspectives. He makes a, look, a lot of bad choices. Um, he doesn't always do them for good reasons so much as instinctual reasons but he doesn't use his past as an excuse we just I want the reader to know that it's something that has shaped him and it's not something that is an excuse for why he is the way he is that was like very specific but very vague at the same time so I hope you guys kind of got a little little bit of a taste I mean you got two names out of me which is more than I ever thought I would say on video until I had it done with at least and uh, now moving on over to Instagram Annalise asked, what influenced you to become a writer and has there been a book that uh, that you read that has changed your life? Honestly, there are books that have made me look at the world differently and look at inwardly at myself differently and those are the ones that I want to tell you because I don't think that there's a book that has just like click changed, changed everything for me. Um, or I could even go back so far as to say like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to go with this other choice. And it's not even for the subject matter of the book so much as the book. Uh, and I'm gonna go with Beautiful Disaster by Jamie McGuire because if it weren't for that book then I wouldn't have wanted to read the next book, the sequel, which is Walking Disaster, which if it hadn't been for wanting to read that book I may have gone to the book signing um, all the hell away out in Katy 
and met my best friend at that book signing. So in that way, that book did change so much for me because of what it caused in that ripple. Um, but if you're talking about the subject matter of a book and how it made me like look at myself differently or the world differently, just things differently, um, November 9 by Colleen Hoover. Oh, God. I have been in a really not great place since I started college. Um, like mentally, emotionally, I just have been more hard on myself than I ever have been. Um, and so reading that, I won't spoil you, but I have a full review for it. I'll link it down there and up here. It was the right time in my life that I really needed to hear it. It helped kind of give me a boost when I needed it. Um, another book that I would say would be Mudbane by Taryn Fisher, and that book still to this day just like, oh, it like makes my, my inner writer just like, like this, just hand motions. I can't can't describe it. I love that book though. I have a review for it also. Um, what influenced me to become a writer? All right, so it was my ninth grade year of high school and I was in an English class and we had two teachers in the class because we had students with special needs um, and they required extra attention. I was that really shy person who wouldn't speak up about anything. I wouldn't talk in class. I was the people pleaser. I would be like, oh my god, that was me. And so I was often sat with people who had a hard time keeping quiet or I was sat with special needs people or people who had discipline issues stuff like that because I would never talk at all but I had a teacher notice that I would come in reading a different book every couple days then whenever we turned in writing assignments we traded with another partner and we would like underline and read like a sentence that we think is a run-on for them to like edit and stuff before we like turn it in for a final copy or whatever so our drafts um, and I would always finish my partners really really fast I would have very very few errors in mine and so she would give me other people with special needs like theirs to grade just to help her out and so I was completely happy to do that um, and so I guess for both of those reasons, she said to me one day, um, have you ever thought about doing AP English? I think you'd be really good at it. And that was all I needed as far as encouragement. So over the summer, uh, for that three month period, I wrote my first book. I really am proud of myself for committing to it. Like, that was a lot of work. I was like, wow, well, you like 14 or f I wasn't able to drive yet. So I was 14 and I wrote my first book. It's not good. It's never going to see the light of day, but it's for me. And I was so proud of it. It's what it meant and that's what really started the ball rolling for me. Larissa asked, can you give us some detail on the book you're currently writing and what made you want to write and what are some struggles you have with writing? What made me want to write? Again, that was kind of like what I just an uh, answered. What made me want to maybe keep writing? I'll like adjust it a little bit to give you more thorough of an answer. I don't know. Ever since I was little, um, I had a really close friend. We grew up together. Uh, we used to play with Barbies and I would always create these like great storylines and I would always remember them even if we would go like months between ever like playing with them I would remember their backstories and like every I don't know like six months or so we would like change up and do a new story or start over but I would remember all the details and I'd be like no this person was that and that person was that and that happened remember and I always loved creating those stories and so I've always had this love for it so I think it's something that I don't know maybe it just would have happened eventually I'm just glad that it happened when it did uh, but what made me want to start writing my most recent novel uh it was with the encouragement of my friend megan um we met at that book signing we started meeting at a starbucks every week for like i think like a month before we were like okay you're not a serial killer let that's cool like you want to come to my house uh but we would meet every every week there i think it was on thursdays and we would let each other read the other one's book because she wrote two at the time and we just we bonded over that i've never met someone else that right yeah it just it really encouraged me to keep going and she would edit things for me and she still does edit things for me and it's just really great to have a friend like that um some of my current struggles that i'm currently writing on right now um my plot i don't know what the fuck i want to do with my book anymore i recently decided that i don't want my ending to end how i planned on ending it for like two or three i've been working on this book three or four years i don't know whenever walking disaster came out it was April of April 2nd of I don't remember what year I think like 2013 maybe so I'm just struggling with figuring out where I want my plot to go some details about what I'm writing I'm really afraid to um I feel like I kind of I gave a bit of information with this I just the copywriting world terrifies me I know that since I have this video it'll be dated I'll have proof like that these ideas are my own that these characters names are my own and everything I can't really tell that much right now um what I can say is that it focuses in more on the story of these two people, but it's really a bigger question and a bigger theme I'm working over, like the whole arc 
of the story. Just to force people to look at things from a different perspective. I think that's what I want to do the most in my writing is I want people to look at people differently and things differently and not be so quick to judge before they know the story. So that's all I got. Uh, I think that's all my questions as well. And if you liked this, please give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see more writing Q&As from me in the future, please tell me down there. Ooh, that scared me, my doggo. But I will see you guys later next time.